South Carolina finally succumbed to that pressure. So a lot of, lot of interesting things about this, and we talk about civil rights. It took almost 40 years for us to get that accomplished. Okay, 40 years. All right, any questions on that? Okay, last thing we'll cover today and during this test material is a worldwide civil rights protest, the 1968 Summer Olympic Games. A worldwide civil rights protest, the 1968 Summer Olympic Games. Now, I've told you kids before that 1968 was a very interesting year. A lot of not very positive things happened in 1968. And I will eventually show you a video narrated by Tom, Tom Brokaw that talks just about 1968. When we get through the Vietnam War, I'll show you that. This is another thing that happened in 68 that wasn't very positive. Okay? So we've talked about all kinds of protests. We've talked about the walk from Selma to Montgomery. We've talked about the Summer Freedom Project. We've talked about the Watts riot. We've talked about the riots in Detroit. I mean, we've talked about lots of things, have we not? Black power. Well, probably the most noticeable protest of the 1960s, and maybe ever, occurred during another major sporting event, the 1968 Summer Olympic Games. And everything was going just hunky-dory, but remember, this is 1968. We're in the middle of the civil rights crisis. And what type of athletes do we have representing the United States in, in the Summer Olympics? A lot of black athletes, who a lot of them don't feel very good about the way they've been treated, right? But we'll see what happens. Well, during those Olympic Games in track and field, a fellow by the name of Tommy Smith won the gold medal in the 200-meter dash. John Carlos, another African-American, got third and won the silver medal. So during the 1968 Summer Olympic Games in Mexico City, in the track and field events, in the 200-meter dash, Tommy Smith, an African-American, wins the gold. John Carlos, an African-American, wins the bronze. Now what happens after you finish your race and people win, you know, win their medals? You present their medals and what do you do? You step on a podium just like they do at the state track meet now, first, second, third, fourth, fifth, and you give them their medals and you play the national anthem of what? Of which one? Whoever got first. In the Olympics you just had three. You didn't have five, you just had three. First, second, third. Gold, silver, bronze. So as, as John Carlos and Tommy Smith are on the medal stand, and you can see the picture back there kind of behind Mary. Both men decided to protest the treatment of Negroes in the United States during the raising of the American flag and playing of the national anthem. And you can see in the picture that both Smith and Carlos wore black gloves on one hand, and they raised their black glove fist in the air with their heads down during the playing of the National Anthem. If you look at that picture there, and I'm going to give you a handout, and you already have a handout we'll talk about, you'll see it as well. Okay, got a second. We'll tell you that's a great story. Now, you can imagine how well that went over back in the United States. You can just imagine that. Okay, Disrespectful, head down during the playing of the National Anthem. And even though those two guys would tell you this was not a black power symbol, that's how people took it. Because that's what the symbol was at the time. So people all around the world, especially white people, were shocked at this blatant show of disrespect to the American flag and to the national anthem. As a result of their actions, both Smith and Carlos were immediately suspended from the games and expelled from the Olympic Village. They were sent home. So they were immediately suspended from any further competition in the Olympic Games and expelled from the American Olympic Village and sent home. Okay? Now, contrary to popular rumor, as I get older and you get younger, time passes, they did not have their medals stripped from them. A lot of people think they did. They did not strip them of their medals. They just simply suspended them from any further competition and expelled them from the village and told them to go home. 
Now, getting to a point is a very important question. The guy that placed second and won the silver medal was an Australian by the name of Peter Norman. Peter Norman was the man in the middle of this famous picture, so to speak. He was an Australian. Obviously, he was white. So he's the athlete that places second in the 200 meter dash. He earns a silver medal. He's from Australia, Peter Norman. Now his time in the 200 meter dash in 1968 was 20.06 seconds, which is still an Australian track and field record in the 200 meters today. He was very quick. So Norman won the silver medal with a time of 20.06, and it's still one of the oldest Australian track and field records to this date. Now, here's a good story. If you take a chance to look at that, you'll see that each of those men has a button on their lapel of their sweat, <coughs> track sweats. They have a button. And the button was a button that supported the Movement for Human Rights Project. It was a project that was going on back in the United States. And all three men are wearing this button that supports the Movement for Human Rights Project. If you look at the picture, You'll, I'll, you've got a handout, we'll kind of take a look. You'll see those buttons. Now, you think Norman had one of those buttons when he got up to the medal ceremony? No, he didn't. It was an American thing. But Tommy Smith gave him one. And he had heard about it, and he supported the movement, so he chose to wear the button on his warm-up as well during that medal ceremony. Certainly didn't choose to put a black fisted glove up in the air, but he chose to wear the button. Ironically though, Carlos had forgotten his black gloves. They had the same plan. They were going to wear black gloves on each hand and raise one in the air. Carlos forgot his glove. And when the two men were down there talking about what they were going to do, it was Norman that suggested they just wear one glove each, since he only had one pair. So Tommy Smith wears the right black glove, John Carlos wears the left. And it was actually Norman who suggested that both Carlos and Smith wear one of Smith's gloves for their protest. Who knows if they'd have had two pair? I don't know if the guy would have wore one or not. I doubt it, but who knows? Okay, they only had two. Well, because of that very small part of that protest in which he wore that button, Australia's Olympic authorities reprimanded Norman very hard. They didn't kick him out of the games or send him home, but when he got home to Australia, he was severely reprimanded for being a very small part of that protest. And who just ostracized him and gave many negative reports on him when he got home? Who did? Who does it all? Who, who's the priest to have that ability to, What? Australian media. The Australian media just crushed him. They gave terrible negative reports about him. He was just ostracized back home. Well, he continues his track career. And in 1972, we're going to select another Olympic team for the next Summer Olympics, right? And despite finishing third in the trials, which would normally qualify an athlete for the Olympics, they left Norman off of the 1972 Olympic team, did not choose him. Even though he finished third, which is normally the criteria to make the team, they put another one in his place, Australian Olympic officials. So you can kind of see the treatment he's getting, right? So in 1972, despite finishing third in the trials, which would normally qualify an athlete for the Olympics, Norman was left off the 72 Australian Olympic team. Despite that setback, he continued to compete. Unfortunately, he got gangrene after tearing his Achilles tendon in 1985. And that ended his running career. Now, if you were him, how, how, how happy would you be? So what did he start to do? Because of his depression, he started to drink heavily. So after he tore his Achilles tendon and contracted gangrene in 1985, which ended his running career, the 
Depression set in, heavy drinking followed, and Norman died of a heart attack in 2006 at the age of 64. So depression, heavy drinking followed Norman after his track career, didn't take care of himself very well, and in 2006 in Melbourne, Australia, he dies of a heart attack at the age of 64. He's the tragedy of this story in a lot of ways. The other people went back to a lot, Smith and Carlos went back to a, a lot of grief. And then that put a lot of pressure on the other black athletes to do what at the medal ceremony after that? You know, support us, man, do something. That was tremendous pressure, it was horrible pressure on them. Okay, no one did, and then they were criticized by their black counterparts back and I said, why didn't you stand up and do something? While Smith and Carlos were getting just crushed back home by white people for doing it. So it was just a really negative situation. Well, uh, kind of a, a nice ending to this story is that despite the fact that Norman died, both Smith and Carlos went back to Australia to his funeral and both served as pallbearers. Kind of a neat story. So they kept in contact after these Olympic Games and the family of Peter Norman felt it important that Smith and Carlos go back to the funeral and serve as his pallbearers. Well, Smith and Carlos were not really shed into very good light in history until 2008. They were kind of vindicated after 40 years, 68 to 2008. They were vindicated. How do you think they were vindicated? I'll give you a little hint. ESPN. Some of you sports fans. ESPN. You're close. What? Does ESPN give out that might vindicate these guys after 40 years? Anybody got a guess? You ever heard of the ESPYs? No. Hey, what's the number one award that I about barfed on? I should turn off the recorder. I about barfed on in the person that received this award last year. The Arthur Ashe Courage Award. Who received that last year? Okay, yeah, whatever. I'll get. I won't. I'll, I'll stop my comments. However, John Carlos and Tommy Smith received the Arthur Ashe Award for Courage for what they did in 1968 at the 2008 ESPY Awards, and I'm going to show you that on YouTube here, just a second. 